In this video, we'll discuss triangles. Now, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. So let's compare triangles to not triangles. Here we have four triangles. Here we have three that are not triangles. The triangles are all closed, connected, and have three sides. Whereas the not triangles, we have one that's open, and then the other two have curves to them. So the sides have to be segments since it is a polygon. Now, within a triangle, we can look at the relationships of the angle measures. First, we know that the sum of the interior angle measures has to always be 180 degrees in Euclidean geometry. So if we use our example here, we're looking at our three interior angles, and if I add them together, they will be 180 degrees. Now, additionally, in Euclidean geometry, the exterior angle measures always sum to 360 degrees. So you can see that we've extended the sides of the triangle, and if I take those three angle measures, and even if I manipulate it B, D, or E to create a different triangle, the three exterior angle measures will always add up to a 360 degrees. And there's a third relationship that is very helpful, which is that the measure of each exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So what are the remote interior angles? So if, let's start with the first one. Say that the 99 degrees, this exterior angle, it's adjacent to 81, so the remote interior are the other two angles inside the triangle. And if I add 53 plus 46, that does equal 99. This is true because the 99 and the 81 are supplementary, and the 81 plus these two have to also add up to 180 degrees. Thus, those two measures have to be equal, hence why this is true. That means also that the 134 degrees has to equal the 81 plus 53, and the 127 degrees has to equal 81 plus 46. So it holds in all cases of each exterior angle. When we classify triangles, we'll classify them by angles as well as by sides. Within the angles, we have the acute uh, classification where all angle measures are less than 90 degrees with a very special case of the equal angular triangle. And that's when all angle measures are 60 degrees. We also have the right triangle, where exactly one angle measure is 90 degrees. And then we have the obtuse triangle, where exactly one angle measure is greater than 90 degrees. It's that 90 degree measure that is the separator between these three classifications. So if I have three different triangles here, I want to classify just by angles. The first one, I see the right angle marker, which notifies me that this is a right triangle. Also, if I take 57 and 33, that's 90 degrees, and I know all three have to add up to 180 degrees, so this has to be 90. In this second triangle, I have a measure that's greater than 90 degrees, so this is considered obtuse. And the third one, all three angle measures are less than 90 degrees, so this is acute. Now, if I'm measuring and classifying by sides, I'm looking at those measurements and seeing how they compare. If the triangle is scalene, then no sides are congruent. And it's also important to recognize that the number of congruent sides corresponds with the number of congruent angles. So if no sides are congruent, then no angles are congruent. If two sides are congruent, then two angles are congruent. And that'll be helpful as we work on classification. Also, the isosceles triangle means that at least two sides are congruent. And the special case here is the equilateral triangle where all sides are congruent. These are not separate cases. The equilateral is a special case of isosceles. So always remember that it's a group within a group. So if I look at my three examples here, I have two sides marked as congruent. So this is isosceles. Here, all three sides have different lengths given. So this is scalene. And here, all three sides are marked as congruent. That's at least two congruent sides, so it is isosceles. And if I want to be more specific, I could write it as equilateral. But equilateral triangles are isosceles triangles as well. So when we classify, we want to try to classify not just by angles, but by sides and angles if enough information is provided. And when this happens, you'll also get the regular triangle, which we've talked about before, and that means that it is both equiangular and equilateral. 
So let's look at some examples related to classifying both angles and sides. So in this first one, I see these two sides are marked as congruent, which tells me it is an isosceles triangle, but I don't know these angle measures here. However, if I think about what I know is that an isosceles triangle, two sides are congruent, thus the opposite two angles have to be congruent as well. So in this case, I can say if this is x, then this will be x as well, and I can say that 40 plus 2x has to equal 180 degrees. So I can now solve my equation and get that, that each of those measures has to be 70 degrees. Since this is 70, this is 70, this is 40, this is a acute isosceles triangle. Now with the second one, I'm missing the third angle measure. But again, I can use the fact that the angle measures have to sum to 180 degrees and then solve for the missing angle measure to see that it's 130 degrees. Now since each angle measure is different, I know that each side has a different side length. Therefore, this has to be an obtuse scaling triangle. And in my third example here, all three sides are congruent. That means all three, I'm sorry, all three angles are congruent, which means all three sides have to be congruent as well. This makes it a regular triangle. Now, just like we're talking about classifications, we also want to know, can a triangle even be constructed if we're given specific lengths? And what we know is that the sum of the two shorter sides must always be greater than the third side's length if a triangle is to be constructed. And if it is constructed, we can even take it a step further to determine what type of triangle, but we're gonna focus just on the idea of can a triangle be constructed. So say that I have these three lengths, that AB is four, AD is six, and BD is three. And I wanna look and say, okay, I wanna take the two shorter sides, so that's the four plus the three, and compare that to six. Well, four plus three is seven, and seven is greater than six. And what's it require? That those two sides are greater. So this would be yes, it's a triangle. And if you tried to construct it, your triangle would look something like this. Now, what if I had that AB was seven, BD was three, and AD was two? Now I'm gonna take my two shorter sides, in this case it's the second two, and say two plus three and compare that to seven. Well, five is actually less than seven, not greater. So this would not construct a triangle. And if you tried and you move the pieces, you'd see there that they do not align. 